um, yesterday, uh, two of Kaz's eggs, two Hershey eggs, were meeping. There was no pips or anything, but they were cheap cheeps, and I could hear them in the egg. So this morning we're going to see if any of them have pipped. Oh! Not only have they pipped, they're actually out the egg. OMG! That's amazing. You're adorable! You are so adorable! Where are we going? To put these cutie adorables under Kaz. She only hatched two. So here Bridget is slowly fostering the chicks onto the mummy chicken and as she does so she slowly removes one egg at a time. Generally this should be done in the evening but we thought, figured we would try and see if she would uh, take them um, successfully during the day. Cool, well I'll see what she does. High five, good day's work right? The mummy chicken is talking to them. She's her, showed them how to eat and drink. So, result, I think she's officially fostered them, which means we don't have to get the heat lamp out. So this will probably be the last mating before the summer because they don't do so well in the heat. So they'll get the summer off and um, have a nice rest ready for the autumn. Ah, uh, that's it. We have a date. <laughs> Post-coital broccoli stalk. <laughs> so we have the six pullets and they're talkative and healthy and brown. Say hi fruit and nuts, say hi whisper and Mars, say hi twirl and galaxy. Those are the ones in the box. They're more comfortable with the green shopping box than in the actual cardboard box. And then nuts on my lap. They're a bit thirsty at the moment, a bit stressed out, but I'm gonna get them fed and watered and settled down. It's been about an hour since we got them back in and they're, they're doing all right. <laughs> yeah. We've had a few people ask um, if they can have some of our eggs so we decided to increase the flock so that we've got extra eggs to spare. Flock and the pecking order, the real problems is Kit Kat and Magpie. Hershey's kind of chill with it, she hangs out with them a lot actually, she's not that bothered. She's kind of like the chicken that hangs out with the kids, like those ones, you know. Uh, but uh, the white ones aren't a problem as well. I uh, just like they just walk by without anything going wrong, just to see the food, you know. Like if if Kitty Cat walked by, she'd be like beating them up on the way. Yeah. So she's she's not that great a chicken. So we've got yeah, yeah we've got fruit, nut, Mars, dime, Yorkie, and galaxy. Galaxy. Coming out yet? Okay, Galaxy's busy. But there's Gandhi Goose laying an egg, show them how it's done. And you're all happy now, aren't you? Lots of happy noises. It's a lovely sunny morning. Um, this morning I'm going to plant a little row of lettuce along the edge here and then I'm going to cover it in um, rabbit manure which has got a lot of hay with it. So the idea is that hay is going to be a bit of a mulch. Hopefully the mulch will just keep the water in with the potatoes. 
because they can be quite a thirsty plant so hopefully um, that will do the trick. The idea is I'll sow each edge so we'll have some successional lettuce around the outside of the potatoes. So as you can see I've sort of slapped it on. I've kind of left the edges a bit bare because that's where I want to plant my lettuce. Um, I've planted the lettuce along here. If we put a piece of timber, or if I find like a good length of tree trunk or something like that, if we put that along where you want this bed, mm -hmm. we, it won't throw yeah. all that way. So without a doubt, our biggest challenge with this garden is the fact that we don't have any soil. There's minimal soil on top of rock. <laughs> so any soil is better than no soil. So we're using compost from the dump, which is a mixture of kitchen and garden waste. We're using uh, manure that still needs to rot down, which we're turning and turning into compost ourselves. And we're now able to get to the back of the pile, now it's drier, to get old aged manure. So we're mixing it all together and keeping our fingers crossed. So we've made a bed next to the original. And I've just added some hay, cardboard, layer of cardboard to suppress the grass and weeds. And then some hay to hopefully look in a bit more moisture because I'm still sh convinced that this bed's a bit too dry. Um, and I think we're going to plant butternut squash and zucchini and stuff in here. So I want it to retain as much moisture as possible. So yeah, it's going well. I'm about to start shoveling the dirt on top. There's a zip for your tea, Marcus. You don't need to shove it up the bottom. Well, I'm getting worried. I can drink my tea. You think have an experience of a of a bee suit? I'd be able to. I still can't work it. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Surviving. This is the new bed. And the chickens are bathing in it. <laughs> Want to help? Marcus is in his element again. Outdoor gym. Looks like good growing though, doesn't it? Yeah. It's a beautiful day here and very quiet, very still. Children are indoors doing their schoolwork. So it's blissfully quiet for once. And I'm just enjoying my coffee. I'm going to put the washing on the line and then I'm going to make a start on the cabbage bed. So the cabbage bed is going to go by the side of the trailer, so in front of those other two beds, and it's going to be double the length. And Marcus is going to do something fancy with leftover polytunnel hoops so that we can um, sort of build a cloche and wrap them up to escape the cabbage white. So it actually feels like it's happening. We managed to get the hoops glued up so they're ready to go on the polytunnel. So progress is finally happening. And the chickens are happy. They're having a little sunbathe in their chicken tractor. But listening to the birds is just gorgeous.
Hi, Bud. Hey, Haribo. This is Haribo. Got a very muddy body. 